We're going to take some time now to remember a voice and a face which graced tens of millions of teenage bedrooms during the 70s. Yeah, we're talking, of course, about Les McEwen, the lead singer of the Bay City Rollers, who has died at the age of 65. BBC Scotland's arts correspondent Polly McLean has been looking back at his life. They came from Scotland, but in the 1970s, the world belonged to the Bay City Rollers. Les McEwen was just 17 when he joined the group, lead singer on a string of hits. Poster boy for a million tartan scarf waving fans. The band sold 100 million records and topped the charts in every record-selling country, but they had to fight a lengthy legal battle to claim a share. Les left the band in 1978 and launched a series of solo projects, but in 2015 came the news that Rollers had been waiting for. The band were back together for a series of gigs, which were so popular they had to add more and more. Les's family announced his death on social media. They said it had been a shock and a profound loss. He was 65. For fans around the world, it'll also be a blow. Teenagers know more, but hearts still broken. That was BBC Scotland's arts correspondent Polly McLean reporting. Yeah, and we can speak now to the veteran DJ and broadcaster, Johnny Walker, who knew Les. Uh, Johnny, nice to see you. Um, good morning. Um, how will you remember him? Well, he had immense charm. He was a great singer. He was very forgiving, because I was rather rude about their music at one point. Um, and he, he had a wonderful sense of humour. And he didn't take things too seriously. And I interviewed him a couple of times, uh, once for drive time on Radio 2 and then for Sounds of the 70s. We're going to re repeat it this Sunday afternoon. Uh, there's a lot of laughter. You said... Um, uh, he was just really a lovely guy. You said that um, you were perhaps not so enthusiastic about their song. Tell me what happened, because they may have been gracious, but not everyone was pleased with you expressing that opinion. No, the boss of Radio 1 wasn't too happy. The trouble was, I was really into bands like the Eagles and Steely Dan and Led Zeppelin, and I was playing songs like shang -a -lang and Chirpy Chirpy Cheap Cheap. Um, so it didn't quite fit. I, the listeners liked my mix of album tracks and singles, but not the boss. Anyway, I used to announce a chart on a Tuesday, and I announced for the sixth week, uh, Bye Bye Baby by the Bay City Rollers was at number one, and I didn't sound very enthusiastic about it. <laughs> And um, my producer came in and said, the BB switchboard is jammed with angry Bay City Rollers fans uh, that uh, you didn't sound enthusiastic that they're number one. You better apologize, which was not really a good suggestion for me because at the end of the record, I thought, I'm not going to apologize. So I said, you know, I don't mind you liking whichever group you like. You can love them all you like, but don't expect me to love them. I think they make musical garbage. And which was not a very nice thing to say. And I do apologize now uh, for upsetting all Bay City Rollers fans at the time. But part of it was the fact that the press were hailing them as the new Beatles because really of the fan hysteria that surrounded them. I mean, they, they were a very successful band. They sold over a hundred million records. They did a great thing for Scotland and for Tartan. <laughs> the outfits they wore were really good. <laughs> And uh, millions of girls the world over absolutely loved them. So yeah. I really shouldn't be, I shouldn't have been so rude. And Johnny, we're looking at some of those pictures now, uh, the tartan there on full display. Um, and also you make those comparisons. And, and as you said, a lot of people make comparisons with the Beatles. Some also said it sort of paved the way for boy bands as we have come to know them now. Um, is that a fair comparison? Um, yes, I, I suppose it is really. I mean, one thing I found out this morning reading various obituaries is that uh, they inspired the Ramones, uh, a punk rock band in New York who, who said, we love to play Super Rollers. We thought their songs were great. And uh, they, they inspired them. So they were a big inspiration to um, a lot of musicians that, that followed. They were the first really big boy band, I think. Do you, will you be playing any of their music today? Not today, because I haven't got a show today, but on Sunday afternoon I will. 
I thought you might be able to yeah. be playing it at home. You know, reminisce and... <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I just feel very sorry for the family, for his wife and of his course, son. That yeah. was obviously a complete shock to them. And Les had tried very hard to live a clean as life as possible because drink was a problem for him and he gave it up and he's been teetotal for a, a long time. So for, to suddenly pop off the way he has at the age of 65 is just so unexpected and therefore such a shock. So our thoughts must go out to friends and family. Yeah, and, and, and on that... And on that note, Johnny, I mean, as you said, um, finding sort of some trouble when he left the band, but, you know, he found happiness in later life, didn't he? Yes, he did. He really did. And, and there's all this talk about the past, about they were ripped off and there were court cases and legal problems and everything. He never, he didn't have any bitterness about him. And he would just shrug things off and make a joke about it. And he very much was living his life for today with his, his wife and his son. And, you know, the plans that they had, I mean, his wife borrowed his phone to ring the manager who was putting together this new tour that they were working on. So the manager thought, oh, here's Les coming on to chat about the tour. And then it wasn't, it was his wife with some very devastating news. So it's a big shock to a lot of people. Yeah, a big shock. Um... Johnny, it's good to talk to you. Thank you for sharing your memories and your thoughts this morning. Um, and as Johnny was saying, um, you can hear his interview with Les McEwen. That's on uh, Sounds of the 70s. That's on Sunday at 3 o'clock on BBC Radio 2. And of course, as always, you can catch up on BBC Sounds. Let's talk to Mike.